Welcome everyone to the Air Force Reserve Basketball Hall of Fame tip-off as part of Feast Week presented by Lowe's. And today it's game two of our semifinals featuring the Arizona State Sun Devils taking on the St. John's Red Storm here for the winner moving on to the championship to take on Virginia tomorrow afternoon. Hi everyone and welcome inside Mohegan Sun Arena in Connecticut. Mike Corey, Lafonso Ellis. Not a bad first game of Virginia UMass. Indeed. How about this one? You know it's going to be a track meet, right? It's going to be an unbelievable track meet. You're talking about two teams that rank in the top 30 in terms of pace of play. 84 points per game for both teams. What it comes down to when you play fast, you got to limit your turnovers. The team that turns the ball over the most will lose this game this afternoon. Arizona State, you see it? Averaging a pretty good amount of points there. 82 or for possession, I should say, for 40 minutes. And St. John's right around the same numbers there as well. Absolutely, and that's what makes for a fun game. It's gonna be wild, open, and fun today. So sit back and enjoy. Head coach for St. John's, Mike Anderson, his first season now coming after eight years at Arkansas, previously at Missouri and UAB before that. And off to a pretty good start here at four and one so far the early part of this season. And Arizona State and Bobby Hurley now in his fifth season, two straight NCAA tournaments. Haven't done that since 80 81. All right, so a lot of possessions, a lot of points. <laughs> Let's see what we have here. You got the Sun yeah. Devils, you got Mohegan Sun Arena. Come on. You got the. Look, look at you putting things together. Yes. I'm so proud of you. And the winner gets Virginia tomorrow for the championship of the Air Force Reserve Basketball Hall of Fame tip off classic. Either way we go, that'll be contrasting styles. Yes. So Arizona State has it to begin today. And Remy Martin, who you talked about, is one of the stars for this team now, a junior, averaging 19 points a game. Mm -hmm. Nice anticipation and block there by number one, Josh Roberts in white. St. John's. This is Rutherford, Nick Rutherford. Figueroa. That's a three. That's good. Figueroa is shooting lights out on the year from three. 50% from three. How about that ball fake little sidestep and knocking it down with confidence. 16 three-pointer of the season out of 31 attempts now for LJ Figueroa. Tamani Lawrence got it knocked away. And Julian Champagny gets a steal for St. John's. Another three ball is off. Martin. You know, we find in game one, UMass took a lot of <laughs> ill-advised early threes in yes. the shot clock against Virginia. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to see a lot of that here today. Well, that's how Arizona State plays. So the first open look they get, the shot's going up. <laughs> On a take down the baseline. Oh, what a follow by Josh Roberts. Last year played sparingly, but this year an athletic shot blocker, and he's so good at getting to the front of that rim. Explosive put back by Roberts. That's a traveling violation on Kamani Lawrence for Arizona State. Still scoreless here in the first couple minutes. Folks, whenever you see your guard drop into the basket, you should just roll right behind them because you'll find an open alley to the rim. That was a terrific read by Josh Roberts, who sends it home powerfully. How about St. John's here in the early part of the season? Four and one beat Columbia handily. The only loss was to Vermont, who actually just played Virginia yeah. very close. Absolutely. So no slaps there in the Catamounts. Vermont was up five against UVA late. Rutherford. That time, St. John's did a great job of taking advantage of the overplay. Whenever you see the wings overplayed there, backdoor opportunities were there. St. John's doing a nice job executing. Arizona State's got to get into the paint, either off the bounce or off the pass. Freddie Martin, it's off on the shot. Another rebound by St. John's, and they are off and running here. L.J. Figueroa. Up 
balance, not there. And Arizona State as Martin Drove still can't find the bottom of the net here. And St. John's a foul is called as Mustafa Heron will head to the free throw line. Mike, what's happening here early is Arizona State's having a difficult time adjusting to the physical basketball that St. John's is playing. And that's really been the difference here early. You see Martin, and when I saw him on the offensive end, he was getting checked there by Josh Roberts. And the length of that guy, mm -hmm. you know, for St. John's mm -hmm. makes it tough to try to get around. Well, you know, any team coached by Mike Anderson is going to be physical, tough, and they're going to be swarming. And that's been the situation here defensively for St. John's. They've been terrific here early. How about his pedigree? Absolutely. Nolan Richardson, the best. What was it, 40 minutes of hell? It's what they used to refer to it. Well, he played under him back at Tulsa, yeah. and then he immediately became his assistant, then called him to Arkansas, where he was there for 17 years as an yeah. assistant coach. Go ahead. No, you forget about Absolutely. that, how great he's been as a head coach. He's for 17 as an assistant. How about that? Martin tries to gun it inside, and there's a foul called on Heron. How about when we go back to those days at Tulsa? He graduated back in 1982. There's a shot. And what it looked like back then. How about with Paul Pressey? Oh, Paul Pressey was playing for the Milwaukee Bucks when I went into the league in 92, and he was still able to shoot it. How about those short shorts, man? They're back in style. Oh, now. that's, uh, yeah, we love that. Come on. <laughs> Working his way inside as Lawrence, not there, and there's a foul on the rebound. And Mike noticed that's the first time that Arizona State's gotten dribble penetration into the lane. When you can get it into the lane against an aggressive defensive team, you can get, get some opportunities at the rim, kick it to the weak side, or you can take advantage of the offensive glass as Romello White did there. And Romello White, who started 63 of his first 65 games, yep. first two years at Arizona State, has been a consistent force for these guys. Yeah, he has. He was suspended early for violating team rules. And look, he's a great offensive rebounder, good passer out of double teams. They need him to start finishing plays around the rim. Really struggled making plays around the rim early point blank range against Ryder. Didn't miss that one game, as you alluded to. And, you know, they've only played three games so yeah. far this season, Arizona State. <laughs> one over in China. <laughs> right, and that's why, because yes. it's a far trip. And five of their first seven are on the road. Incredible. They'll be well tested come Pac-12 play. Figueroa. Mm. Too strong offensive rebound. No, and the third try by Roberts says yes. And that's an area that Arizona State has struggled all season long, the ability to take care of their backboard. Not been able to keep people off the glass. And a steal from Nick Rutherford. I was waiting when we were going to see this. Timeout Arizona State. They need it. 15-38 to play. First half. And St. John's flexing their muscle here early on that offensive glass. Josh Roberts has done a tremendous job. Look at the quick leaps over the top. St. John's is on a roll, out in transition, finishing there. Up 10 as we go to break. There's Alonzo Verge Jr. for Arizona State, the junior from Chicago, yeah. Illinois. Not in the lineup today, Fonz. Sprained wrist, not 100%, not medically cleared to play. Well, that's big because he hasn't shot the ball very well, only over 11 from three, but what he gives you is another guy who can get in the lane and create plays for his teammates. You're talking about four assists. He's a good rebounder as well, given his size at five rebounds a game. And so we've seen early they've missed his presence because Arizona State has not been able to get into the paint consistently. And they started Elias Valtanen, the sophomore, in his place. He's not in right now as a wild runner by Ruddy Martin doesn't go. Not great shots here so far for the Sun Devils. And St. John's with possession, a chance to extend their double-digit advantage. And there's a foul on Arizona State. 
Yeah, Jalen House is coming to the game. He's instant offense for Arizona State coming off the bench at 14 points per game, but maybe a tall order for him against a very physical backcourt of St. John's. Well, and he's had a rough week, too. You see the goggles on. He got poked in the eye on Tuesday, and he's actually not feeling well. He wasn't feeling well last night and into today. So trying to battle through it here for Arizona State a long ways away from home. And they're down 10 early. Rebound Remy Martin. Rob Edwards and try to get it back to Martin. Yeah, the pressure of St. John's right now has really sped up Arizona State. And Arizona State is usually really good at handling the basketball. Low turnover team, but they have not handled this pressure here for St. John's early. Four turnovers in the early going. None so far for St. John's. Five minutes gone by. Long three on the way. L.J. Figueroa. What was he thinking? No, he's been so good on the year. 17 points per game, second leading scorer on this team. And as we noted earlier, 50% from three. He's having a spectacular year. White gets yes. a step, and finally another basket for Arizona State. The perimeter of Arizona State will be neutralized in this game. It's going to be important for the front line here of Arizona State to take over this game if they're going to get back into it. Machine done. Done launching. Rob Edwards, the senior, he's been good throughout his career. Off the bench last year. Now 16 points a game on average Tough this shot. season. Yeah. Got in his face. Yeah, Romello White wide open down in the post. That was a selfish play there by Rob Edwards. Figueroa follows his shot and goes into the front row. Well, when you hit it from Massachusetts, <laughs> oh my it, gosh. so you got to. You shoot that from Vermont. Yeah, that's where I'm from. <laughs> Shout out to Brattleboro there on that one, with that long three-pointer way up north. My goodness. L.J. Figueroa, so good, can guard multiple positions, can beat you off the bounds, has the three ball, and can play the post as well. He's the perfect Mike Anderson type of guy on both ends of the floor. Almost a travel there by House. Mm -hmm. Martin is fouled by Dunn. How about Robbie Martin? Guy leads his team in scoring, assists, steals, plays the most minutes. The second team all Pac-12 last season for this group that went to the tournament. Well, he, he's looking at some dudes today in Rasheem Dunn, number three, Greg Williams Jr., number four, who are equally as quick but a little bit more physical and stronger. So... They're going to have to set some screens for number one in yellow to get him open to get him going. Look at that ball pressure right here. And it's got to be tough to play against a team with length, you know, and, and yeah. this pressure too. They force him to talk about it. Yeah. Called us. Again, they're equally as quick as St. John's, long arms, physical. And so they're creating a lot of problems for Ruby Martin so far in this game. Falling down is done. Wild sequence here. Ends up being a long range jumper by David Carraher, and now this is out of bounds to the Red Storm. Yeah, being out physical so far in this game. Arizona State. The son of Jalen Graham, another true freshman. Mm -hmm. Romello White hits the bench. Jalen House just took off the goggles. Ooh. Number 10 in yellow there, yep. folks. You're right. I'm not playing with these. <laughs> Have you ever had to do that? Is it is it hard to see? I mean, yeah, I've never had the goggles with the mask. Right. And uh, both of them kind of fog up, and you so it, it's, it's just different. And for me, I'm a little bit claustrophobic, and so I couldn't play with that stuff on my face. So I was willing to exacerbate an injury yeah and then play with it on my face 
He got poked in the eye on Tuesday. Yeah. So the mask comes off. The ball's out of bounds here to St. John's. 12 on the shot clock. Caleb Christopher was in. He heads that to the bench. Good defense there by Rob Edwards. Another shot clock down to four. That did not hit the rim on the runner by Earlington. And we remind you, coverage of our Air Force Reserve Basketball Hall of Fame tip-off continues tomorrow with our championship game. Virginia takes on the winner of this game here today at 1 o'clock Eastern on ESPN and at 3.30 Eastern on ESPN2, the third-place game. Catch it live also on the ESPN app. Edwards. Tough one. He got it though. And that's what that pressure defense does is it forces you to make tough individual plays and Coach Mike Anderson will take those because he doesn't feel like they have the personnel to be able to make those kind of plays consistently for 40 minutes. Done one of the screen goes the other way though and draws the foul. And he'll shoot free throws when we come back. St. John's 15, Arizona State 6. Mike Anderson spent some time at Arkansas. Last year, they had only three returning players, lost 80% of their scoring, still went to the second round of the NIT. Yeah. Now he comes here to St. John's, playing under Nolan Richardson back in the day at Tulsa. And you talked about his type of teams. How about the consistency with 15 years minimum of experience? These coaches have had no losing seasons. Anderson is in some pretty elite company. Right? It, it, it's incredible because when you think of that, you wouldn't think of Mike Anderson. You may be able to come up with these three guys, but he loves to be unpredictable on the defensive end. His teams play with energy. They pressure you. They speed the opponent up, and that's why he's been so successful everywhere he's been, and he's been successful with it so far here early in this game against Arizona State as well. We know how impressive Roy Williams and Tom Ezzo have mm -hmm. been, and also, Mark Few. I happen to be looking up uh, Gonzaga uh, last week. They're 102 and 11 in the last three seasons and 50 and 2 in conference. Gonzaga is. Yeah, uh, unreal. And they come back with a team that can win it this year. Yeah. Played well early. Now they've added their best player, Killian Tillian. Tilly and Tilly back to the mold. And this is a Gonzaga team that I have in my final four. Powerful inside on the shot that time by Earlington. Doesn't go though, and here come the Sun Devils. Ten point lead for St. John's. Cherry Cup. Oh, nice feedback door to Rob Edwards. Yeah, anytime you get teams playing, overplaying on the wings or on the corner, those backdoor opportunities are available. Beautiful execution there by Arizona State. That's a travel here, too, by Sears. You would think, let's go back to that last play first. Folks, watch, watch the overplay right here on the baseline here. Now, anytime you get a guy charging, they're over the top, you can go back door. That was a beautiful read by Rob Edwards, and those opportunities are there in the half court for Arizona State. They've got to look for more. House trying to fight through some traffic up at the top. It's a three, and Valtonen drains it. And all of a sudden, it's a 9-1 to one run for Arizona State. And Valtonen didn't play much last year. Not as many minutes available, but he can really knock down that three ball. Carraher for three. That's not there. And a foul on the floor on Arizona State. Looks like Arizona State has now adjusted. Early on, I thought they would knock back because of the physical play of St. John's, especially as how aggressive their guards are. And now all of a sudden, they've made a little adjustment. They've calmed down a bit. I thought they were sped up early and playing too quickly and turning it over. Last couple possessions, they've looked more like the Arizona State team I've seen on tape. That's the thing. When you know you come out, you want to play fast and you want to do that kind of stuff. But then when you're forced to take a step back. Yeah. It's hard. Hard to turn it down. Absolutely. They started 0 for 6, Fonz. They're 4 for the last spot. Yeah, they finally settled down. And I think a lot of that has had to do with Jalen House coming off the bench. 
been able to keep the ball in front, getting the ball moving from side to side. He's done a nice job here early. Now Heron is being hounded in a steal here from House. You called it, and he goes right in, and he draws the foul. And that has been the spark that they needed. And he does it on the defensive end. Oh, Jared House has been so good. Averaging 14 points coming off the bench, but he's the spark plug that comes off the bench that gets this group going. And he did in the last game against Ryder. Things weren't going so well. The team was two of 14 field goals to open up that game and down 12-2. It was Jalen House came into the game, got a knock down a three, got a steal, got a layup, and turned that thing around. They went on a 10-0 run. How about that? And how about his dad, who you played with, right? Eddie House? I love Eddie House. One of the funniest guys I've ever played with. Heck of a scorer, too. Played with him with the Miami Heat, and Eddie did the same. Came off the bench for us, and if he made one or two J's, you can forget it, because he could get hot and run off about six or seven in a row. Won a world championship with the Boston Celtics. He's had a magnificent both collegiate and pro careers. St. John's tried the alley-oop, doesn't go, and here's House again the other way. He'll put up a three, and he hits it. There's that guy. <laughs> There's that man. And when you can score and run the floor, you can get back in it in a hurry. It's tied at 16, and a foul on a three-point shooter. Cherry is going to be called for it on L.J. Figueroa. Fourteen to one run here for the Sun Devils. Yeah, a lot of that predicated with Jalen House. He, his energy is just contagious, man. He picks up the ball, turns the ball, the ball handler three or four times, coming up the floor, sacrifices his body. And the officials telling us that there was a bit of a flop. So, folks, when you see the official have his two elbows out and then the up and down motion with both hands, that's letting you know that there's a flop <laughs> on that one. And it's a Class B foul, technical foul, and if you get another one, you go to the foul line. Right, you get the one warning, yes. and then if it's called again, and it doesn't have to be, it's not player specific. Exactly. So that's what we're talking about here, right? So number 10, and mm -hmm. that's House, okay? Yes. And they're deeming that to be a flop. Yes. He didn't get contacted. He tries to fool the official saying, oh, I got fouled. So that's a warning. That happens again. As you said, Franz, Class B technical foul. The yes. other team would shoot one free throw mm -hmm. and get the ball, and all subsequent ones after that as yes. well. And so it's also considered a delay of game. And so if you turn around and get a delay of game, now watching the other opposing team right back to the foul line. I like the rule because yep. they need to get flopping out of the game. Now, you would never do anything like that. You know, well, I, I, I was just reminded <laughs> by our great producer, Jim McCoy, that it sounds like a guy who got beat by Duke four times. <laughs> you got to do everything you can do. Because right. <laughs> they were some floppers. <laughs> uh, okay. Leitner, yep. <laughs> Greg yep. Hill, Bobby, <laughs> all of them some floppers. They're, they're thankful they played then and not now. <laughs> great the players. And we've got not, that. Not great players, but they were floppers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Graham hits it for Arizona State with tied at 18. And they've got the rebound and a chance to go in front here for the first time today. Nice. Lawrence. And that got deflected on its way in. Offensive rebound. Graham. Nice pass. He's got to take that shot. House gets rejected by Figueroa. Lawrence again, and he's fouled. What assertiveness here by yeah. Arizona State. Well, what we're seeing, again, because of Jalen House's ability to get into the gaps, and they're kicking it, and they're redriving it. And that's the one thing we talked about in the first two, three minutes of this game. Arizona State was getting zero paint touches. Not so over the last several minutes, and that's why they tie, come back and tie this game up. Smarter job, too, to also work the ball around and, and get those openings like that backdoor cut yeah. that they had. When you're not doing it one on one or you're getting in trouble, you got to move the ball around. Yeah, one of the hardest defensive plays to make is a defensive closeout. And so if you can get that ball reversing and get guys running out to shooters, now you can shot fake it and put it in deck and get in the gaps. And that's exactly what Kamani Lawrence did on that possession. Offensive rebound, House rejected. And here comes St. John's in a hurry. Rutherford. All out of control is now Valton in. Well, 
Look at throw that basketball inside. Number 23, Romello White had a small on him at the time and didn't identify quick enough. Missed opportunity there by the Sun Devils. House has the pick from White, has to flex it out. Seven on the shot clock. Arizona State with the first lead here today. 19-18 at St. John's has missed their last eight shots. Mm -hmm. Long three, Martin, no. Figueroa, it's out of bounds off of him. Arizona State has it again. And look who's around the ball, hustling yet again, Jalen House. On the offensive end, though, for St. John's, they've got to get the ball back in Figueroa's hands. He's the guy who was hot early and got them off to such a hot start, and now they've gotten away from them 30 and wide. Yeah, correct. He's hit a couple of threes already, and now it's a bad miss by Lawrence from three. Now we understand why he is hesitant to take those couple of early shots yeah. he had earlier. And inside, the basket's good by Champagne. It's a really good drive created off of Nick Rutherford's dribble penetration to the baseline. Now we're right in the game that we thought we were going to have right here. Back and forth, the one-point ball game here. And a timeout with just under eight minutes to go first half. Good one with Arizona State at St. John's. College football tonight, Justin Herbert, number six, Oregon, trying to keep their college football playoff hopes alive, taking on Arizona State on the football field. Ducks have won nine in a row, trying to make it ten in a row tonight, and we'll see if they can do it at 7.30 Eastern on ABC. We've got the Arizona State basketball team in action right now, mm -hmm. taking on St. John's here, Mohegan Sun Arena in Connecticut. Mike Corey, Alfonso Ellis, how about this? St. John's started 15 to two, and then Arizona State says, "Okay, we'll be right back." In a 17 to five run. <laughs> yeah, I thought the physicality and the speed of St. John's really pushed Arizona back on their heels early. But then, when they inserted Jalen House into the game, number 10 in gold there, now all of a sudden he was able to get after it a bit, create some couple turnovers along the way, get some stops, and that was the difference creating that run for. Arizona State there late in the first half. House. And it got deflected out by Josh Roberts. No goal ten in. I think that's what some of the crowd is moaning about here with 7.33 to play first Let's half. Let's see if that hit the backboard yeah. first. No, I thought he, the shot blocker guided it into the backboard. That was a good no call by the official. Mm -hmm. Just before it. Yeah. 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 You're right. Jumper blocked. 
Yeah, that's a poor decision by Cherry. He had House wide open to his right. Got to the make the block. extra pass. Fourteen to shoot. Remy Martin, and he's fouled by Heron. And this is they need Remy Martin, their leading scorer at 19 points per game. He's been shut out here early by the longer, quicker guards there of St. John's. And sometimes we don't have it going if you can get to the foul line or get a layup to see the ball going through the net. Now all of a sudden it raises your level of confidence. I wouldn't be surprised if the next time down the floor, the next time he got a shot, if he knocks it down on the offensive end. Once he gets going, right? Mm -hmm. That's the thing. Yeah. Heron's got two fouls now. We'll keep an eye on that. Senior for St. John's. Mm -hmm. They're a top scorer. Number Martin got fouled shooting the three, so he's got one more shot, but yeah. Arizona State back in front. And as he goes, the team goes. Last year was Zylan Cheatham and Lou Dort's team. This year, it's number one in yellow over there. This is Remy Martin's team. And that was a team that beat the St. John squad in the first four in Dayton. The runner does it go for Rutherford. Martin, three-pointer, no. Yeah, everything's short for him right now. He shoots a flat ball anyway, so he's gonna have to get a little bit of arc on there to get it to go. The runner goes here for Rasheem Dunn. I really like Rasheem Dunn. I mean, the way he can get up and under the basketball, his speed, ability to attack off the bounce. I really like number three in white. White. Corner, Edwards, no. Figueroa tipped up and in. Yeah. This and is another flop. So yes. oh, here it's we on go. Jalen House. We can see it right there from yep. the official. House, I mean, he's trying to draw the charge. Absolutely. But he doesn't even get hit, and he goes down, and that's what we just mentioned. And it's the same player. It's mm -hmm. the second time in a row on him. Mm -hmm. So this is going to result in the technical free throw or the class B technical foul. After the second time you get one warning then this one the opponent will shoot one free throw and they'll have the ball. And folks any delay of game caused by Arizona State's bench or the team on the floor another foul shot. And so they're really trying to take all the flopping out of the game. I don't like the fact that it slows down the game but they, we do have to get this out of our game. And this can be on anybody, anybody. right? Fons, offensive yeah. player, defensive mm -hmm. player, even if you, you have it on offensive. Yes. Thing. Because they look at it as the intent to deceive, obviously. And the basket had counted. Yes. So now that's why it's Arizona State ball. Correct. They got the free throw for the flop. And now St. John's gets a steal. See how that could be a real swing. Dunn misses. And here's Martin. We well, got to credit these officials where every year, you know, comes in and there's yeah. all these new rules and yes. regulations passed, and then they're good with it. They're all over it. Second foul on Roberts. So here's Elias Valtanen. And he'll have another. So let's go back to that last play. Let's take a look here as Rob Edwards makes a beautiful pass inside. And we thought Valton may have had an opportunity to take another little bounce pass underneath the Romello White. But I think it's one of those bang bang situations. He had to give a little fake and get to the foul line. I think that was a wise decision. Valton and converts them both out of Finland. Sophomore season. Some extended minutes now. The injury. Alonzo Verge, who is not available today, he's got the wrist injury. Not medically cleared to play. Figueroa. Mm. A shot. Offensive rebound counted for Marcellus Erlington. Erlington is a beast on that offensive glass. Three offensive rebounds per game. 
positions himself well on the glass. And a foul though on Erlington. Well, well, that's because Erlington's a, a football player too yeah. as well. He used to play football back in Don Bosco. Defensive man. Jersey. Defensive man. Yeah, he was. Yeah. The big guy. He's dropped about 20 pounds. And three to feet, moving well. He's a big key to the St. John's team. And he had some power five offers too. Mm -hmm. He'll play football yeah. at the top level and chose to play basketball instead. Smart kid. Can, you can control the elements in this sport. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> yes. You know, as much as I love football, right? Yeah. Everybody asks me, hey, do you, what do you think of better, football, basketball? I say, I like them both. When basketball season comes along, five guys in its team, yeah. mid court, climate control, <laughs> exactly. everything's fine. Yeah, you know, yeah, just that. so much there. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> No double numbers. No. <laughs> Very true. <laughs> Here's Dunn with 10 to shoot. Early 10. Oh, what's it they going to yeah. call here? Offensive foul yeah, this time. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Really nice so they took contact. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what happens is when you can be early on the defensive end, it puts you in a perfect position. Valton and doing a really nice job of waiting until the contact. Once he feels the contact, then he goes down. That's really well done. And that's the legitimate version. <laughs> yeah. to take that, right? Exactly right. Coming up on five minutes to go, first half. Arizona State has missed their last nine shots. You see three players in a little foul trouble for St. John's with two fouls. Here's House. Double clutch runner. Wow. I'll tell you what, he's such a plus for this team coming off the bench. If he wouldn't have, I don't know where they, Arizona State would be this afternoon without the efforts and the production of Jalen House. Seven points for him. Two point ball game. Figueroa's got a mismatch over there. Remy Martin, they've got to take him to the block. Mm. Set a foul on the drive by Dunn. Mm -hmm. Brooklyn kid, Cleveland State transfer. Sat out last year, but granted a waiver. Teammates with Shamori Ponds and Thomas Jefferson. Right. Can you imagine those two coming after you? <laughs> oh my gosh. Think about that. I mean, there's a lot of those kind of connections yeah. with the talent that you play with at that level and what that could do for you when you step up. Yeah. Now he, he was the perfect fit for this team because the one area that they needed some leadership was at the point guard position. And Machine Dunn has given them exactly that. 14 points a game over the two games he's played. And you've seen his defensive pressure. He's a wise dude, makes good decisions with the basketball. So what a plus for the St. John's Red Storm. Stays a two-point game here, 27-25. This is the semifinals. Winner of this game gets Virginia tomorrow for the championship at 1 o'clock on ESPN. House again. Follow is there by Jalen Graham. We talked earlier, whenever you see dribble penetration by a guard, a big should just run to the front of the rim. He can get a lot of offensive rebounds there, and that's exactly what the freshman Jalen Graham did there. Coming up on a timeout at the next whistle. We're tied at 27, under four minutes to go now. Mm. On the take, Figueroa. And good things happen when the basketball's in Figueroa's hands. What a good read. Loves corner threes. Nice pass. On the feed that time. Graham finding the cutter, Cherry, and we've got a timeout. 3.34 remaining. St. John's by two here at Mohegan Sun Arena in Connecticut. Be back with more after this. <laughs> St. John's hanging on to a two-point lead here over Arizona State. But the Sun Devils are back in it 
Thanks to House. Yeah, Arizona State's leading scorer, Remy Martin, has really struggled here in the first half. Need an injection of energy. House has done exactly that. Able to get out in transition with that great burst of speed of his. Able to get in gaps, make some plays for his teammates. Able to knock down a couple shots. Seven points, four rebounds in this game. And his ability to get in the gaps, able to change it. Such a diminutive guy, but man, that dude plays with a big heart. Son of Eddie House, as we talked about earlier, and as you played with Eddie back in the day, and Jalen here, who got his dance on too. You see him? What was that? He was just getting his oh, dance yeah, on he, too. He's been doing this all day with the, with the music here when he can sing. I love it's been it. Great. I'll yeah. Tell you what, just like his dad, Have fun. Just like his dad, like he doesn't get tired. I mean, my gosh, the endurance level of this kid is incredible. Now we're still in the first half here, but I, I agree with what you're saying. He's going full out in this ball game. You know, he got poked in the eye on Tuesday. Here's a three-pointer by Champagny. That's good for St. John's. As House gets it on the inbound. He got poked in the eye. House did. He had to wear the goggles, but he took them off here after this game had started. He's like, I can't play with these on. And he's not even feeling 100% today either. He's, he's a little bit ill. So. He took the goggles off and went from Clark Kent to Superman. <laughs> yeah. Ball in his hands. Under three to go first half. Five point deficit. Martin. And yeah, that's a travel. The shot clock is expiring as well. Romello White. Yeah, he just better, catch that one. Yeah, go better serve to just take a little quick hook shot over the top, and he certainly has that in his game. Yeah, sometimes you see as big guys, you know, you, you want to put that ball on the ground. Yeah. You don't have to do it. Mm -mm. Shan Penny, number two in white, diving across the lane. He's wide open. Tend to shoot. Figueroa, he hit one from deep from there before. Offensive rebound put back up and in by Dunn. I tell you, I love Rasheem Dunn. Man, the energy and the effort that he plays with. Impressive. Slice through that entire area to get that offensive rebound. And look who was running Smart. for that ball yeah, going out of bounds. <laughs> yep. Arizona State trailing by seven points. Seven nothing run for St. John's. We worked out at 27. Nice pass. Yep. There's the finish that time from White. Yeah, dribble penetration, whether it be anywhere to the painted area, whether from the baseline wing or the top, has been really good for Arizona State. They've got to get more of it. Tough shot. Rebound White off the miss that time from Figueroa. Yeah, Figueroa's got that little runner in his game, but from that angle, that's tough. Here's a three, Lawrence. Figueroa the rebound. He thought about it again. Mm -hmm. I've been impressed by the patience of this St. John's team on the offensive end. That's rolled by Champagne. And he converts on the feed from Dunn. It's Mike Anderson's first recruit, Brooklyn kid. And right back to White. Now we're starting to be at the pace that we talked about before. Well, still liable to be in the 80s here, right? Almost on the 40-point mark for each team in the first half. Well, I should say for St. John's. 31 for Arizona State. And they'll be two points closer to that after the finish by early 10. There's Rasheem Dunn doing what he does, getting in the painted area and making good decisions. Under 30 seconds left at the half. 7 second differential shot clock game clock ball in the hands of house gonna have to do, uh, watch the run and jump here from St. John's nice move by house through a double team a fight for the rebound it's gonna be a jump and a possession arrow favors St. John's yeah house had what he wanted it slipped off of his fingertips at the last second as he tried to finger roll it over the top but that was a really good decision and nice move to get to the lane just a freshman out of Phoenix Arizona and a timeout taken by St. John's with 11.6 to go. 
one I want to ask you about is the is mm -hmm. the pace. Like you talked about that, yeah. you're coming up, you're firing quick shots. Mm -hmm. You know, we'll, we'll start with Coach Hurley. I mean, is he? Are you okay with that? You know, as a coach and, and recognizing that that's just the way you play, mm -hmm. and you're gonna what make more than you miss. I, I don't know. What, what's the thought process there? Coming down, and taking quick shots like that all the time. Well, they're quick, good shots. There are quick, good shots that are available, and so you, when you're pushing it up the floor and you're able to touch the paint and suck the defense in and pitch it out, and those you get early looks that way, that's great. But when you come down same side, one touch and just jack, that's a bad shot. And Coach Bobby Hurley does not want those types of shots. Coach Hurley, just you know, one of two current head coaches who are Final Four MVPs, wow. outstanding players about that? that are out there right now. Danny Manning, Danny Manning, the miracles. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he was a pretty good pro too. How about Pryor? He was at Buffalo for mm -hmm. a couple of years, 2013 yeah. to 15. Yeah, I got a chance to call a couple of his games up there. Shannon Evans, his terrific point guard of Buffalo, went with him to Arizona State. It's a foul on House, not happy with just 4.5 seconds left. And Coach Hurley had led Buffalo to a school record matching 23 wins in yeah. the NCAA tournament, first mm -hmm. time in history. Impressive. <laughs> yeah. He comes from a great line. His dad, Bobby Hurley Sr. Terrific oh. high school coach, his brother Danny. I was going to say, he's taking over at UConn. They've well, got a couple of really good wins here early. Beat Georgetown. Yeah. Just beat Florida. Yeah, beat Florida. Forget me. Yeah, yeah. Right here in this state. Absolutely. Just across the way, not far over in stores. Was Florida yeah, State Denver. number six at that time? Florida State? No, Florida. Oh, Florida. Florida. Yeah. 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 Top 10. Yeah. Bobby was such a cerebral ball player when he was at Duke and of course when he was at Sacramento. I mean, mm -hmm. So not surprised at all he's doing well on the sideline. Four and a half to go first half done converts 40 31 St. John's two seconds house good if it goes and that's the end of the first half. Nine point lead for St. John's over Arizona State. Winner gets Virginia tomorrow for the championship. We're at the half. We'll be back in just a little bit. St. John's on top of Arizona State, 40 to 31 at the break. Sun Devils were down early, came back. And now they're trying to keep it going once again here. But how about the play of Jalen House? They needed this. Well, with Remy Martin ineffective here in the first half, they needed an injection of energy, and that came off the bench from Jalen House, using his speed, getting out in transition to get to the gap, able to knock down a big three to maintain that momentum. I thought his energy and effort coming off the bench was terrific, allowing Arizona State to climb back into this basketball game. He was superb in the first half. Seven points, four rebounds. It was also called though for two flopping calls as well. So you don't want to do that in the second half <laughs> as they took the lead for the t for a little bit. And then St. John's has come back to take a nine point lead into the locker room. We'll be back with more at the half from Mohegan Sun Arena. 40 to 31, St. John's in front. St. John's leading Arizona State 40 to 31, thanks in large part to the play of junior LJ Figueroa for the Red Storm. He's been impressive in this first. Yeah, game. the Red Storm's best player, Mustafa Heron, couldn't quite get it going in the first half, so they needed their second best player to step up, but he certainly did. LJ Figueroa was getting it done everywhere on the floor, shooting a variety of threes and knocking them down, able to get in the lane and make plays for himself and his teammates, effective on the defensive end as well. And when they needed a bucket early, Early on, it was L.J. Figueroa delivering here in the game for the Dice. Not far away from his home hometown in Lawrence, Massachusetts, Figueroa here in Connecticut today with 13 points and five rebounds so far in the first half for the Red Storm as they lead it 40 to 31 at the break. We'll be back with more at the half from Mohegan Sun Arena right after this. We're back to the Air Force Reserve Basketball Hall of Fame tip-off as part of Feast Week, presented by Lowe's. 40 to 31, St. John's leads Arizona State. Start of the second half is coming right up here. Mike Corey alongside 
Alfonso Ellis, welcome back inside Mohegan Sun Arena, everyone. Good to have you with us. Winner of this game takes on Virginia for the yeah. title tomorrow at 1 o'clock. What have you seen in this matchup with these two? Well, I thought St. John's came out and really applied the pressure early and then really knocked Arizona State back, and they were able to get out to a big lead. But all of a sudden, Jalen House comes off the bench for Arizona State, gave them a tremendous burst of energy, able to knock down some shots, get in the lane, finish some layups, get other guys involved in the offense because they really missed the presence of Remy Martin. Remy Martin was in a effective for the Sun Devils in the first half. First half stats are brought to you by the Basketball Hall of Fame. You can see the game of runs that we've had here. Started with St. John's. Arizona State came back, took a small lead. Yeah. And then Red Storm ending the half on a 13 to 4 run. That's the reason why they lead by nine here. Well, St. John's was terrific getting in the lane, making plays, and they were also great on the offensive glass and so for the Sun Devils to get back in this game and take a lead they've got to take good care of the basketball keep St. John's out of the paint and keep them off the glass crazy travel for Arizona State this season right they were in China for game one of the year lost to Colorado mm -hmm. by 10 five of their first seven games are on the road but you know what an experience right to go do that I mean I watched that game earlier this year to go all the way out there and uh, just to have that trip and also be able to gain experience with your team, but also camaraderie. All that time that you spend together, right, Fonz? You know what that's all about. Yeah, it's, it's great for building camaraderie, no question about it. But those trips to China, man, coming back, it's difficult to adjust. I was telling Bobby Hurley that I just went to Europe and came back, and it took my wife and me about 10 days to adjust to being back on Eastern Standard Time. Well, here's what it was like when they traveled to China. Nice. <laughs> wow. They went to Disney in China? At the Disneyland. Sweet. Disneyland Shanghai. Yeah. That's awesome. Played Colorado out there. What an incredible experience for those young men, right? An exhibition game out there as well, yeah. Hey, did, would our card work in China? I would hope so. <laughs> I hope you're right. We were just talking about that the other night. We better get a mission. Right? <laughs> Here's a three in the corner, no good for Arizona State. That time by Lawrence. We gotta get you up to speed and all the perks and preps. You know. Guys, you get me up to speed last night. I appreciate it. Try to go to the one in the states here first. You know, then, then we'll get you. That'll be my warm up. Yeah. Get that down to a science first, right? <laughs> How about trying to take the, the family out there? Right. <laughs> nice pass. And a foul is called as Rob Edwards will head to the free throw line. Yeah, a lot of players make that entry pass into the post and they just stand, not Rob Edwards. He threw that basketball in the post, saw his defensive player turn his head out of position. And what a beautiful drop off pass on the inside by Romello White. And for Arizona State to win this game, Remy Martin, number one in yellow, and wow. Rob Edwards, number two in yellow. They've got to get it going on the offensive end. Both of those guys were quiet in the first half. Second foul on Julian Champagny for St. John's. Yeah, you talked about it, yeah. Martin. Jeez, 0 for 6. I mean, Remy Martin, 19 points a game. Rob Edwards, 16 points a game. Mm -hmm. Those guys were non-factors in the first half. Free throw line struggles here. And a foul is called. Lawrence. And Rob Edwards is just out of sorts today. I mean, he's not been able to make his shots. He's 50% from three on the year. He's a 91% free throw shooter. And so I'm not sure what's got him distracted right now, but he's got to make a defensive play to get his mindset back in this game. Yeah, four points for Edwards. Martin has two, so that's six points between the two guys who, as you said, combined to average 35 a ball game. Yeah, that was a good defensive possession there by Rob. Now Martin takes it in. Lawrence, nice kick, extra pass. I thought Valton should have taken that shot. Lawrence, offensive foul. Taking the charge was Erlington. Well, and that's what happens when you're playing against a good sound defense. All of a sudden, you get a wide open shot and you don't take it. And now you start to move it. And it always leads to some type of turnover. When you get a good look, the first good look you get against a good defensive team, you got to take that shot. Well, and it's also a product of being in the right spot and good positioning for the other team defensively. Mm -hmm. Like, he was ready for that. He yes. knew that was coming. Exactly. St. John's ball, nine point lead still. 
minute 40 gone by the second half three pointer not there foul on the rebound on St. John's. <laughs> Watch that little Arlington number two for St. John's. He's like, whoa, whoa. Put back the other way. Oh, come on now. With the strength and power that kid has. Yeah. <laughs> if he guy. pushes you, you know it. <laughs> I mean, pretty good for what he's done, right? He averaged only two points and a mm -hmm. rebound and a half in mm -hmm. about four minutes a game last yeah. year. Now he's averaging 16 minutes a game and almost 10 points a ball. Game. Yeah, you need a guy that you don't need to run offense for to that can be effective on the offensive end. He certainly did that. And there he is right there fighting the post and Melo White forcing him back, knocking him off his block. And when you displace a player, even an offensive player, you displace a defensive player, it's an offensive foul. That's a good call by the official. And that was a three second call that time. We oh, three bit. second? Yeah. Forgive me, I'm sorry. So we had a little bit Ooh. of this game too. Uh oh. House. Oh, nice cut. Nice decision. Yep, there's Edwards. There's House again, creating havoc on the defensive end. Oh, nice feed inside. Champagne from Rutherford. Timeout is called. Arizona State. Still a nine point ball game here. Now, second half in Connecticut. St. John still leads by nine in his second half. And it was a timeout taken by Arizona State. We're going to show you why. Here's the sequence. The whole sequence house on the assist, right? Yeah, he actually got a great steal there and then celebrated afterwards. And his man actually able to get in the gap and able to create a play. And Bobby Hurley called a timeout quickly. Jalen House knew he was in trouble as you see him slap his thighs there. And uh, nice Bob Hurley this. had uh, some nice little G-rated things to say to him when he was coming off the floor. And he will stay off the floor. Yes, he will. For a little bit, but you, you, you can't fault his excitement and what he's done in oh, this no. game. But it's 40 minutes, 40 minutes when you're yeah. going to be out there. I mean, that's a that's a that's a learning a teaching moment right yeah. there for Bobby Hurley and his young point guard there. That you make a great play, got a steal at half court, able to go down and create some offense for his teammates, and you celebrate, but you got to make sure that you get your butt back on defense and stop that basketball. Not against anybody, really, but especially not a team that's going to be able to run up and down the yeah. floor like St. John's is doing here today. Yeah. Holding top for White. Nice pass. Bouncing, it's got to go right up with that ball. Yeah, it may have cost him two, but I'll get it yeah. back on the offensive rebound per se, not kind of as by St. John's. Yeah, sometimes those big to big interior passes there, the receiver gets a little cute with it and he tries to do too much. Valtman should have gone right up with that basketball. Now with the rule change this year, 20 seconds, shot clock reset to on an offensive rebound. Back to back possession, not 30 anymore, so. He's cognizant of that, and Martin goes quickly for the two. That's big, because he was absolutely shut out there in the first half, and if Remy Martin sees and go through the rim, all of a sudden he can heat up. So let's see if that gets him going here in the second half. Four points for him on the spin move. No basket by Heron. Whoa. Yeah, I couldn't see that when I was shielded, so. Well, let's see here. Pivot foot. Yeah, they call the travel. Let's look at it again. Let's see. Dribble picks it up. Pivot foot is. Yeah. That's a close one. <laughs> I know you played the NBA, but we're asking. Yeah. You know, well, how about we say it this way? If it were the NBA, it would be legal. <laughs> this right. is college, so that's travel. <laughs> Listen, that is a point of emphasis this season that they talk about with the rules. Is here comes St. John's. Rutherford. No, the follow is there by Penny. Mike, and right now, Remy Martin is pressing. And when he can get in the gap that way and draw a second defender, you have the responsibility, actually the obligation to make that next pass. And he's not been willing to do so. And that's why they found themselves in this nine-point hole. Well, he draws the foul here, and it's going to be on Rutherford, his first. So he'll head to the free throw line. But yeah, when we had the uh, meetings before the season about the officiating, too, that was also one of the points was to to clamp down on travels. Absolutely, stuff that mm -hmm. is illegal or you know. I mean, 
and not just let that stuff kind of go. Yeah, and, so and, they're, and they're one real of the, specific. Yeah, and one of the things they really looked at is, of course, all the kids want to do that little step back like, right. <laughs> like Harden does, right? Like James Harden does for the Houston Rockets, and clearly that's a travel. So they right. wanted to take that out of our game, and that's what created the emphasis for looking for travels. And so, to your point, uh, well, the officials are right on top of it now. Look who's back in. House is back into the ballgame. Freshman for Arizona State. Served his probation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Got his privileges taken away there for yeah. a little while. Ooh, what a deal. Martin. Got bumps. Mm -hmm. Scores it anyhow. Number one is back in this game now. That's a good thing for Arizona State. Carahan. Mm -hmm. This is. Now a chance for them finally with some back-to-back yep. -back possessions. Pass. Carraher for the foul. Arizona State trying to come back. We'll be back. How about Remy Martin here for Arizona State? Oh, able to get out of the transition and finish. He's got such quick hands. Sean Farnham caught up with him earlier this year. Time now for a little fast break. Biggest hobby growing up? Um, movies. What's your favorite movie? My favorite movie is Batman. If somebody could play you in a movie, what actor would you choose? Um, Denzel Washington. All right, nice. I don't know if Denzel can pull off the hair, though. That's the one thing I have right now. We're we'll talking about this earlier. Everybody would pick Denzel, right? <laughs> yeah, everybody picks Denzel, but I would want to pick Ridley Martin's hair, man. Yeah, that's awesome. That is awesome. <laughs> You think he'll give me a little bit of it? What's that? Think he'll give me a little bit of it? Oh, yeah, hey. You're, 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 we'll talk to him after this game. Just a little touch. Find out how that gets done. <laughs> <laughs> had a couple of good hairdos so far here in this. Uh, yes, uh, indeed. Action we've had here today. We had UMass and Virginia in game one. Virginia won that one. This is game two. Winners play tomorrow for the title. Yeah. Well All right, so we're down to a five-point game here. Sun Devils trying to... Free back in, Martin for three, he hits it. Well, that's what we talked about when you're an elite level shooter. All of a sudden you get a couple free throws, you get a layup, and that raises your level of confidence having seen that ball go through the nets, and that's exactly what's happened for Remy Martin. Now he gets called for the foul. Seven nothing run, all thanks to this guy. Mm. Just in time, too, for the Sun Devils. L.J. Figueroa, number 30 in white for St. John's. It's been a little quiet here to start this second half. It'll be a got to get going. Mike, did you see that speed? Remy Martin almost caught up with that ball. <laughs> I'm going to go get this and score. These guys are letting this thing go out of bounds. I know. I'd love to know who's the faster between him and Jalen House. Yeah. Can you imagine those dudes? Uh, they're both on the floor right now, both standing on the foul line for Arizona State. Yeah, number one and number ten. It's been fun to watch. Mm -hmm. Yeah, put them on the baseline. I'm sure that's happened in practice right. a few times. Martin is feeling it. Yeah, he's on his own personal 9-0 run here. Not there for Champagne and a rebound by Romano White. Arizona State looking to take the lead. Martin, all on his own. Unreal nine straight two point lead for the Sun Devils. Eleven straight for Martin as they lead 46 44. Push off there, no call. Ball is knocked away. Now we've got a oh, little flopping. Call. Another flopping call. Yeah, I thought about that, but it's in the middle of action. Yeah, what it is, I don't know who it was called on. I didn't know. Yeah, I'm still unclear of who it was called on. <laughs> Let's go back and take a look here. Yeah. The officials are talking about it. We've already had two flopping calls called on house for Arizona State. 
There's another one called on Arizona State because Figueroa is going to shoot the free throw. It's a class B technical foul. Mm -hmm. What that means is that's one shot in the ball and St. John's had the ball. So here's what they're looking at. I also wonder if they called it because usually when they do the signal they point to a number as well and then. And OK and here's what happened. Mm -hmm. It was on Arizona State, so yeah. it's almost like, a, say, a penalty in hockey. Where yeah. And if the next the offensive mm -hmm. team gets mm -hmm. the puck, then they pull it dead. Well, yeah. Arizona just got it, so they said, okay, now we call the flopping, shoot the free throw. Yes. And the ball goes back yeah. to them. Cherry inside, right basket, and a foul. Now, all of a sudden, Arizona State is spreading out this St. John's defense, starting to get a little different penetration to the middle, forcing some help. And what a beautiful big to big pass with the receiver being Romella White. And he's doing a nice job of shielding the defense with his inside shoulder and finishing. Now, here's the thing when you go back to that flopping call, you have to yeah. be aware of this as a, as a team, right? Because you do that. Yes. The minute your team got the ball, you're on a fast break, but they blow it dead. And they had numbers. Right. It was because like, what, three were, on two, three on violation. one? So yeah. not only do you not get the fast break going yes. the other way on a nice defensive play, mm -hmm. the other team shoots a free throw, yes. gets a point potentially, and then you've got to take the ball out of bounds and go the length of the court. Correct. We're talking about certain swings here, mm -hmm. you know, because of that call. Oh, it can disrupt momentum. Yeah. To your point, Arizona State's got a nice little thing going here. Remy Martin's got involved in the game, has run off several straight points, and yeah, you don't want to disrupt it with something like that. And folks, we talked about it. Remy Martin was a non-factor in the first half, but he was able to get and lay one up. And when you're a great shooter and you see it goes in, now all of a sudden your level of confidence raises. And there, hand down, Mark Jackson, man down. He's able to yeah. drill that one. And then comes back and makes it really tough, too. Remy Martin is really inserting himself on the game here in the second half. It's been awesome. All Pac-12 second team member last year. Filipino background. Very proud of that. He's a junior out of Chatsworth, California. And now it's a 49 to 44 game. Five point lead for the Sun Devils. White is out for them. And now let's see how St. John's handles the pressure here. Of Arizona State. Jalen Graham back into the lineup for Arizona State. Almost another steal. Yeah, and Heron's got to get himself going, too. Number zero and white. He's the leading scorer for St. John's. Figueroa. Wild runner. Off balance, and he hits it. That was off the wrong leg. Wrong leg. <laughs> How about 15 points for this guy? Mm -hmm. Five of 12 from the field. Martin, it's mm -hmm. a bad shot. Yeah. Had two guys in front, meaning somebody was open out on the floor. Got to make that extra pass. Tegueroa, step back. Up top, Champagne. Cherry rejected. Goal 10. Remember early in the game, we talked about how out of sorts Arizona State seemed yes. to be on both ends of the floor. Right now, that shifted. Now it's St. John's. St. John's can make jump shots, but St. John's is at their best when they're attacking off the dribble and getting to the rim. No doubt, partner. It's the other way around, for sure. You, know, you really thought St. John's kind of had command of this game. Mm -hmm. right? Most of it, and now a nice running drive here by Rutherford. Because yeah, even though Arizona State came back and took the lead, it was only by one or two. Yeah. And St. John's went right back in front again. Yeah, and that's what we're talking about right there. I love that decision there by Nick Rutherford, putting his head down to the left and getting to the rim. St. John's needs more of it. Can't continue to just rely on the jump shot. Martin is bumped and fouled by Roberts. That's the fourth on Josh Roberts. St. John's become a different basketball team when Roberts is in foul trouble because his ability to be able to block shots. I mean, he is terrific at coming across the lane, and just when you think you've got a layup, he's blocking your shots. He's averaging three block shots per game. 
really anchors that St. John's defense. It is a big loss. Leading shot blocker, leading rebounder, best percentage from the field so far in the early going in this season. So Martin connects. And with him out of the game, I would drive it every yeah. time now because St. John's doesn't have a shot blocker. Well, Martin's been trying to do that no matter whether he's in or not. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. Fifty-three, forty-eight. So in comes Baltanen. Almost eight minutes gone by, second half, and Figueroa tried to find the cutter. Heron, it's out of bounds to Arizona State. Yeah, it was Arizona State in the first four minutes of this game that was sped up, which is how they got down. Now all of a sudden, St. John's not handling the pressure of Arizona State, and they're sped up, which is why they're down five. Fifty three forty eight. Here's House for three. Nope. Rebound by Champagny. Fight after it. Martin and then Rutherford takes it away. Oh, and he tried to alley you to Champagny. Probably not smart. Down five. <laughs> Eleven forty seven to go in the contest. We'll be right back. Arizona State in front right now, 40, 53 48, with 11 47 left. Winner to take on Virginia tomorrow for the title. How about the second half? All of a sudden, the Sun Devils yeah, really ramped up their defense and able to get some steals, get out of transition. They forced St. John's into 10 turnovers. They've gotten 15 points off of those turnovers. And then Remy Martin came to the rescue, ran up about nine points on his own. And that's exactly the infusion of energy and effort and production that they've needed from Mr. Martin. He's been terrific here in the second half. And how about this? The last four years, 21 wins when trailing at the half. The previous five seasons before Hurley, just 12 wins. It's pretty impressive. They trailed by nine, and St. John's has actually led for 21 minutes yeah. and 36 seconds in this game. Arizona State for just four minutes and 13 seconds. Yeah, we've talked about St. John's pressure, but I don't think Arizona gets enough credit. Arizona State, forgive me, gets enough credit for their defensive pressure. They create 13 steals per game off of 23 turnovers forced, and we've seen that on full display here in the second half. Martin once again drawing contact, kicks it out. Valton in for three, not there. He missed it, but that was a really nice drawing kick. Rebound Figueroa and up the court quickly. And a Westland offensive foul on Julian Champagny. Tayshawn Cherry, number 35 in yellow, did a tremendous job of reading where the ball handler was coming from, positioned himself right above the restricted arc and able to absorb that charge. Well done by number 35 in yellow. Third on Champagny for St. John's. And a steal by him. We need a Heron sighting here in the second half. There it is. Heron is fouled. Goes against Cherry for Arizona State. Arizona State. Well, usually he's done pretty well here in this arena. I mean, think about this. He's from Waterbury, Connecticut, not that far away, and he's had three Connecticut wow. State titles right here at Mohegan Sun <laughs> Arena in Uncasville. That's awesome, man. They're going to need some of that magic from Mr. Heron here in the second half because he's been absolutely quiet in this game. He's the leading scorer on this team at 19, 18 points per game, and he's just not gotten into any rhythm on the offensive side, and you got to credit Arizona State's defense. They've been paying a lot of attention to number zero in white. Attended Sacred Heart High School in Waterbury, Connecticut. Not that far down down the road, depending on the traffic, though. 84. <laughs> that's oh, it's a little that's jam up heard. around Waterbury, and that's just the town. If you're from New England, you know that. You're never going to get through there. Always. Here's a three on the way for Arizona State. There's a foul called Cherry misfires, and it's going to be on them. 
Let's see, here's Jalen Ram, number 24. I feel like we're going to be coming right down to the wire. Yes. So like we thought we were Indeed. before the game started. Done. It's a step. Runner now. Offensive rebound. Blocked by Graham. Second try again is early 10. And what also by Cherry. Bench was Cherry. Wow. How about that athleticism? So hey. Pass number 35 in yellow. Hey. To Sean Cherry go out to his basketball. Wow. What athleticism to elude that chair. You gotta be careful when you're doing that, right? I mean, now there's a foul. We don't out of bounds, excuse me. That's your senior leader there, LJ Figueroa, trying to get his team, trying to get them to wake up and get some energy here to try to win this game. Harry is held by Val today. Six team fouls now for Arizona State. There are eight on St. John's. Well, the way all of a sudden it's being called here, the amount of fouls that we've had here late, be ready for some free throws. Still ten and a half to go. Mustafa Heron is now 0 for 7 from the field in this game. What are the percentages here today? I feel like they're down a little bit for each team. Yeah. Here's House. Nice look. Cherry for three. It's Love. good. Yeah. Tayshawn Cherry loves corner threes. Six points for him. Arizona State is now shooting 40% from the field. St. John's 37% for the game so far. Here's a three-point try. Early 10, no. Rebound Champagny. And the floating shot now by Dunn. Plays so under control. <laughs> I just love the way we're seeing Dunn plays the game and watch him sit down and guard. Nine points, three of six in the field. Martin, what a pass. Bouncing it. Wow. That's a great look. Six point lead. Early 10. Don takes a look at the clock. Here's Champagny. And now there's going to be a jump ball call. And that's going to be staying with St. John's on the arrow. Arizona State has done a nice job of attacking off the bounce. Able to get a piece of the paint. Jalen House makes a beautiful pass over to Tayshawn Cherry, who knocks down that corner three, something that he loves. And now Remy Martin with the basketball, able to use his eyes to move the weak side defender and able to throw that basketball underneath the Valton. And that was a really pretty setup by Remy Martin. It really was. Second half shooting for Arizona State here, Fonz. 10 of 17. St. John's 5 of 18. Yeah. Did the dribble, that's something that they weren't getting early on is dribble penetration and making the extra pass several times at the basket. They were holding on to it, even though they've gotten two guys drawn to the basketball. And there's two House with yet another steal. House is fouled. Well, that's the other thing that stepped up is their defense. I mean, you're not going to be able to get back in and take the lead like this without talking about the D. And what's interesting about it with St. John's is one of the ways that you can move the defense, if you will, as you use the ball fake to freeze and then pass. How many ball fakes have you seen from St. John's here in the second half? No. Zero. Not nice. Foul on Dunn, his second. Largest lead of the game here for Arizona State. They were down big early. They were down nine at the half, and now they're up eight. 
13 points was the most that they were trailing in this game today. And folks, until and unless Mustafa Heron, number zero in white, gets involved on the offensive end, St. John's has no shot at winning this game. Offensive foul on Dunn. And Mike Anderson wants to know what that was all about. Jalen House is like a little mat. He gets up in you and underneath you. And this time is Valton. And, and I'm not sure what he did. I don't know if he used his off arm to hook. Yeah, the left Let's see if he used that. Watch that left arm, folks. Yep. <laughs> and then he hooked right. him just a little bit. Well, yeah. and the thing of it's it is, it's hard to official. tell. It is a good call, I thought, yeah. too. But also how you know, forceful that is. Yeah. You know what I mean? But there it is. Yeah, that's a good call. Can't use it. Creates an advantage. Good eyes by the official. Second half turnovers here. Nine for St. John's, three for Arizona State. Hey, Mike, I camera crew is incredible, by the way. I mean, the things that they are able to find and catch tonight have been, uh, this afternoon have been great. Thank you, guys. William Jackson, Theodore Van Allen, Christopher O'Dowd, Jeff Seeley, Bill Montanari. Good job, guys. Thanks so much. Valton and floating runner. Got it. Nice. Just got a little note from the production crew. How about the entire family doing a nice job this afternoon? It is. It really yeah. is. Maybe we'll get Bonnie to buy his dinner. They'll be back. <laughs> give him a shout out and get dinner. Right? <laughs> right? <laughs> Foul on Lawrence here. Yeah, we'll step aside. Under eight minutes to go in this game. The Sun Devils now by 10. I love the uh, during timeout festivities. Yes. Uh, at basketball games. This poor kid. Fonz was cheering for this guy the whole way. Little way. man. Couldn't get his uh, right. pants on. They're too big. I mean, <laughs> you know, know your audience. I could have gave him a smaller size. And I love number 25, but he cheated a little bit, too. He didn't have his jersey all the way on before he started moving forward. <laughs> You got to know the rules here. They're right. clamping down this year. Right. The rule changes. Okay. That should be a flop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It would be our fourth of the day if we got it done, too. Our Air Force Reserve Hall of Fame tip-off continues tomorrow. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. Number seven, Virginia. Mm -hmm. Of course, the defending national champs take on the winner of this game, Arizona State St. John's, 1 o'clock Eastern on ESPN. And, folks, that's going to be an outstanding game. Virginia with the number one defense in the nation against one of these teams, top 30 both teams top 30 in terms of pace of play and so contrasting styles we'll see well and the one thing i like to debunk you know when fans talk about virginia is they think just because their defense and they keep teams the low scoring it's it's not exciting or they don't like it i like watching them play i mean they're a fun team you know when you watch virginia i, I don't I don't think that's a problem. You know? I know. I mean, the, the reality is he gives his offensive guys freedom to be able to make plays. Remember, they shot. They took a lot of threes. They just missed them. They haven't, their three-point shooting percentage has been poor this year. They're only shooting about 16% from three. But their defense carries. They play a fun style on the offensive end. They just don't play as fast as either oh, of these two teams. Yes. 62 to 54, Arizona State's lead. House crosses over. Runner no. And the rebound picked up by Heron. You'd like to see some more out of him here on the offense. Yes. That's going to get him involved. There he is. Nice pass. Nice pass. Wow. Whatever it is, get the ball in his hands. Mm -hmm. And this time he creates. Allowed him to make plays. I thought he actually turned down that three ball. I thought he was going to let it go, but able to get to the paint on the baseline. And what hands by Sham Penny to be to corral that basketball and get fouled. Opportunity for two free throws here. I think Arizona State's got to get Remy Martin back in this game, too. Fallon Kamani Lawrence is fourth, and here is Martin right on cue there, Fonz. You know you got it. Well, what a good friend of mine, our director, <laughs> gave me a little tip that he was on the bench at that time. And obviously, it's crunch time right now. You want your best players on the floor. Thank you, Miss Bonnie Alley, our excellent director. <laughs> it's been a fun crew here today for this yes. semifinals. So good. Uh, the Air Force Reserve Basketball Hall of Fame tip-off classic. And we're coming down to it here with seven minutes to go in a six-point ball game. Mike Corey and Lafonso Ellis, courtside. 
producer Joey McCoy killing it in the truck out there. It's a good day. Yes, it is. Who's going to pull off this win? And what a shot for three from Edwards. Where has he been? 50% shooter from three point line. 16 points per game. He's been quiet. They need that. Not anymore. Mm -hmm. Got that from Belton and after the steal and five quick ones there. Roberts doesn't convert and now all of a sudden Arizona State might be going back to that sequence yes. right there where they really mm -hmm. just took command here up by double digits now. Patient in the half court, reversing the basketball, looking for opportunities to drive and kick. That's been really good for Arizona State. Three ball Edwards again. Didn't quite come up with his fingers right and went left. Done. Wow. Held it right past Champagne. But Edwards, though, with the last five for Arizona State here. Yeah, needed Rob Edwards to get going. 50% from three. He's not shot it well in this game, but that one went underneath. You can never go underneath the screen on a great shooter. He knocks it down there and then it out in transition. Nice throw ahead by Valton in there. What do you think, real quick, on the uh, three point line being backed up a little bit this year with Wolves? Oh, I love it. Going to the international line, yeah. I mean, remember, this generation's growing up watching Steph Curry. They warm up shooting that bad boy from yeah. about 25 feet out, right? Good point. There's Marvin. Where has he been? Well, all of a sudden, in the late stages of this game here, mm -hmm. so they need their big guys to step up. They're getting yeah. it. Especially Martin. Look at that stat line. Two points in the first half. 17 here in the second yeah. half. Nice. Yep. Got that basket for Figueroa. Really nice extra pass there by Roberts, number one in life. Oh, and this is going to be an offensive foul here on yeah. Arizona State. It's a Martin. really good call because Remy Martin, the ball hander, went into the cylinder of number 30, Figueroa. That's a really good call by the official. Last year, years prior, that would always go against the defensive player. That's an excellent call by the official. You have the right to that. Absolutely. Around you. Absolutely. Yeah, a little bit out of control here, St. John's. Under five minutes to go. Oh, boy. And a turnover for the Sun Devils. Got numbers. Rutherford finishes. Plenty of time left in this game for St. John's. They just got to get stops and get buckets. And I think they might have to double team Remy Martin. You can't let him get into a flow. Make someone else on the Arizona State team beat you. Just what you said, they did it way up high too. House! Well, not let that guy beat you. <laughs> I love watching this play, man. Oh my gosh. Jalen House. Little, I can see a lot of Eddie and a lot of Charles in number 10 and white. His, his parents, Eddie and I got a chance to play with each other in Miami. And just when they need a play made, it's been Mr. House, both in the first half and the second half of this game. His energy, his effort, and the productivity out there on the floor has been tremendous this afternoon. 11 points for House. Came off a 20-point effort in the last game for Arizona State. He's just a little dude the last time I saw him. He's yeah. maybe one. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. See, that's the thing. When you have that connection, right, and you're, you're playing against his father, Eddie, and yeah. back in the day, and yeah, there's my young son. And next thing you know, you're seeing him out oh, here. so weird. Like, what? Yeah. And how about the connection of, and then all your son, you know? Uh, we got smashed today by Syracuse. <laughs> well, <laughs> playing playing Buck now. Now. Yeah. yeah. But... Now, how much and how often do you see that, right? I mean, you're a former player. Son gets calls and different yeah. stuff, so that, like these guys, is it because of, I should say, genes, I should say, but I'm sure you're teaching and you're, you're help bringing them up as well. Well, he, well, my son wasn't interested in basketball until very late, until like maybe 10, 11. He wanted to kind of take it, didn't play. More of a football player, hockey player, wide receiver in football. And, hey! 
Dallas is going to go. Run it for the other way. That's blocked. Oh, what a play by Valtonek. Edwards, White. <laughs> High level defense we're seeing right now, bro. Wow. That was special right there on the break for Arizona State. Long three, Figueroa. I think you can get that same shot later in the shot clock, and it's been turnovers, second chance opportunities, and ill advised shots from St. John's that have gotten them down 13 here in the second half. Good pass. Injured player Jalen House is down, yep. number 10 in yellow. Yeah. And folks, we've talked about how good these guys' offense are, but their defense is pretty good too. What a block there by Valtonen. And then you got numbers on the opposite end. And Rob Edwards with a beautiful dime underneath to a running Romello White. That was a beautiful. Jalen House got banged up in this last play here for Arizona State. Ooh. Yeah, right yeah. the hip there of Julian Champagne. Yeah. Hit his face also in the hip of Champagne. And that's the thing. House got poked in the eye on Tuesday. Yeah. They had to wear the goggles. They took him back into the locker room and then they brought him back out. This guy has been a warrior. Yeah. He was wearing goggles to start the game. He took him off, says, I don't want to play with that. And now he wasn't even feeling that well yesterday and into today he was ill. And then he just banged right into the player right there. This guy has been a warrior for Arizona yeah, State. He's had a profound impact on this game. 13 points, six rebounds, three steals. Yeah, he can uh, use the rest, which uh, wouldn't be that much. If they win this game, they'll take on Virginia tomorrow for the championship at 1 o'clock Eastern on ESPN. Figueroa. Early to back to Figueroa. Shot clock at five. Good read. Yep, Rutherford for three, but it's not there. And Valton in with the rebound. And now it's going to be tough here. 15 point lead for Arizona State. Foul is called on Rutherford. Let's get ready to say that they're going to St. John's going to have to gamble a little bit, maybe do a little run and jump, try to get a cross court pass to pick it off to try to get some easy ones in transition to set up their full court trap. Their inefficiency on the offensive end has prevented them from being able to get into their full court pressure. The job of Coach Early's done for Arizona State. Mm -hmm. I mean, they had only went to four NCAA tournaments the past 26 years before yeah. he took over. And now they've went to back-to-back -to -back tournaments for the first time since 1980-1981. They had over 10,500 fans per game at home last yeah. year. That's the second best in school history. So they're back out supporting the team. Yeah. And it's it's all right there. Yeah, I, mean, that, I think they're going to get to the NCAA tournament again this year yeah. in a very good Pac-12, by the way, that I expect five to six teams to get into the NCAA tournament. Behind the back. Not there. The tip. No, the third try. Josh Roberts fights for it, stays with it, off the side of the backboard and into the hands of Graham. And then he got it stolen away. Under two minutes to go. Williams got blocked by Graham. And now Cherry. Three on one. Bouncing it. Headed to the free throw line. Tell you what, we talked about the shot blocking ability of Josh Roberts, number one for St. John's. Uh, the rim protection for Arizona State here in the last eight minutes of this game has been incredible. I mean, just when St. John's thinks they have an easy wide open layup or a putback, I mean, those guys are flying around that front line, and particularly Graham, Jalen Graham, the freshman, number 24 in yellow. It's crazy. I mean, you go back to the stats, it's going to go down to see yeah. it's leading from over half the game, yeah. but not going to probably come up with a win here. I mean, they were up by nine points at the half. Well, the difference is Remy Martin, the star for Arizona State, was ineffective in the first half. 
but then had a huge second half scoring the basketball. Mustafa Heron didn't play well in this game. LJ Figueroa had a really good first half, but hasn't done much here in the second half. So the stars have risen for the Sun Devils, not so much for the Johnnies. Yeah, it's trending to be a career low for Heron, who's got only three points, who averages 17.8 a game, as Dunn lays it in. And no field goals. Right. Five right. for seven. Wow. Yeah, you wouldn't expect that. Uh -oh. oh! Rob Edwards. Instead, it's done. Feeding the cutter, and Heron puts it the other way. With what you just said, there's his first field goal of the day. Unreal. But that speaks to the defensive pressure that Arizona State has applied, and they wanted to take him out of the game, and they've done that. Man, that might be the sickest effort I've seen in a long time. <laughs> and then able to get a nice dunk on the opposite end from Mustafa Heron. And man, too, that's a little too little, a little too late here with Arizona State with the 14-point lead. Just 115 to play, and with a 14-point lead for Arizona State, we hand out today's player of the game, brought to you by the Air Force Reserve. And it is Remy Martin, the junior out of Chatsworth, California. And he's lived up to the hype here with an average of 19 points a game coming in. And has 19 today. Two in the first half, 17 here in the second half for Arizona State. Yeah, he's able to get himself to the foul line, see the basketball go through the nets, and that raised his level of confidence to see a bigger basket. And he's been good off the attack, getting to the rim, and that big three that he made from the right wing was huge. Five players in double figures for Arizona State. Good balance. Under a minute left. Martin. And add to the total, but an offensive rebound by the Sun Devils Edwards. And of course, in no hurry here, foul is called. Yeah. And that possession there for St. John's defensively not coming up with a rebound. Mm -hmm. That's been a microcosm of what's taking place through the balance of this game. Timeout for the subs coming in for Arizona State. Martin stays done. His hand from his faithful that's behind the bench making a long trip out here. And Coach Early said it, you know, when he first got.